In this video, I'll uncover everything you need to know about insulin resistance. Hi ladies and gentlemen, I'm Dr. Zorowski and welcome back to the channel. Now if you're new to the channel, as always, it's a pleasure to have you here. Be sure to subscribe, hit that bell notification, and be sure to join our notification community. That way I can help you excel your health and your life. Now in this video, we're discussing the topic, insulin resistance explained. Now insulin resistance is a big issue. It's really at the heart of the crisis that people are facing today when it comes to their health. When we look at, you know, both uh, children and uh, teenagers, it's estimated that one third of them are suffering from insulin resistance. And it's estimated that 30% of people in the US alone are suffering from insulin resistance. So it's a big problem. And the big problem is that it actually leads to very, very serious health conditions. And so what we're going to do in this video is really just give a, a deep dive into this problem of insulin resistance, how it's happening, what's occurring physiologically. But the most important thing is, you know, how are you going to be able to test for it in your own home? And then lastly, what do you do about this issue? How do you reverse it? And yes, I said reverse it because there's a lot of people who are out there successfully reversing insulin resistant and seeing really good results with it. So stick around to the end and let's dive into this topic here. So when we look at insulin in general, it's a hormone that is produced by the pancreas. And what happens is that when we consume carbohydrates, our blood sugar rises. And when our blood sugar rises, the pancreas releases that insulin into the bloodstream. And then it goes around and it starts picking up that blood sugar and it carries it to the cell. It puts that sugar into the cell for stored energy. Now, then the blood sugar goes down, insulin levels go down, and everything balances out. Now that's in an ideal condition, an ideal situation, I should say. Now, in the case of insulin resistance, something very different happens. What happens is the sugar can't get into the cell. So the insulin goes around, it picks up all that sugar, but it knocks at the door of the cell and it can't get in. So then what happens from there is the body goes, hmm, well, we can't get the sugar into the cell, so here's what we need is more insulin. So the pancreas goes in, pushes out a whole bunch more insulin. So now we have something called hyperinsulinemia. When you have hyperinsulinemia occurring, essentially what happens is it starts actually taking those free fatty acids in the body and storing them as fat. So this is why people who have high insulin levels have a hard time losing weight. And this is why people who have high insulin levels will gain weight like crazy. And so as a result of all this occurrence going on, we got hyperinsulinemia and then the pancreas from there, you know, it, it's pumping out so much insulin that it starts to become worn out, okay? It starts to become damaged, and as a result, you start getting less insulin, but your blood sugar remains high, which is very dangerous. And so then, at this point, you have a serious issue. You have insulin resistance, you have metabolic syndrome, much more going on, we'll get more into that. So what we wanna do is we wanna look at how we go about reversing this issue. So we have too much insulin, blood sugar's high, and then, like I said, we're setting ourselves up for serious conditions. But what is the common causes of this? Okay, let's talk about that because what we want to do is we talk about the causes, the symptoms, talk about how to test it. We want to really be able to understand this topic so that you can start getting some really good results in reversing this issue. So common causes, weight gain and belly fat. Okay, we're not just talking about a little bit of fat around your waist. We're talking about a lot of bit of fat around your waist. So in, uh, if, if you're gaining weight on a daily basis too, there's a good chance that you're going to drive this condition if you don't already have it. Excess calories, overeating, high sugar intake. Now you see how this is all related. You're overeating, too many calories, lots of sugar in the diet, belly fat, gaining weight, inflammation. Okay, now this is inflammation at a cellular level. The cell receptors are inflamed. They can't hear the insulin trying to put that blood sugar into the cell and they just doesn't, it just doesn't work right. So inflammation, oxidative stress, really bad stuff here. Decreased physical activity. Now, there's way too many people who are not getting nearly enough physical activity on a daily basis. Most people wake up in the morning, jump in their car, drive to work, get to the desk, sit there all day, jump back in the car, go home, eat dinner, sit on the couch, days over, okay? Physical activity is absolutely essential for the human DNA. So we wanna make sure that we're getting some more physical activity. Now, here's the deal. Like I said, if, you, if this is you, then you're able to identify, hmm, maybe this is a problem I'm suffering from. Gut health as well. Now when we look at gut health, it's almost always a problem when somebody has insulin resistance. And when someone has diabetes, like I said, almost always they have a gut problem. And basically researchers have went and identified that the microbiome is always affected. And there's a particular bacteria that will be deficient when somebody has insulin resistance or diabetes. So gut health is always a problem. If you have insulin resistance, you have to focus on gut health as well. It's very important, they go hand in hand. Next year is common symptoms, okay? We're using this couple step process here to really identify if this is an issue, issue for you. Intense thirst and hunger. 
also fatigue. Now, this intense thirst, really, this is one of those situations where you keep drinking water, but you just feel like you need more and more water. So intense thirst, lots of hunger, fatigue, because the body can't get the sugar into the cell properly. Tingling in the hands and feet, frequent urination, kind of a part of that intense thirst issue. Hungry post meals. Now the reason that this happens, and this is one of these things where it's like, you know, I feel, I always feel for the people who are going through this issue because it's tough. And you have to understand that these people who are going through it, there's a lot of, you know, hormone imbalance, blood sugar highs and lows, crashes, fatigue, uh, mental games going on, intense cravings, uh, intense cravings for sugar, weight gain occurring, lots of stuff going on. So, you know, I'm very understanding of these people who are in a position with insulin resistance or diabetes because it's hard. And when I you know, look at all these different testimonials that we get on our website and even on this channel here, and I see people reversing diabetes and reversing insulin resistance, I'm so proud of them because I'm like, I know what it takes. I know where, you're, I know where you were mentally because I've worked one-on-one -on -one with so many people facing this issue. And the reason that you're hungry post meals is because basically what happens is because the insulin can't get the sugar into the cell, the body is signaling for you, hey, we need some, we need some energy here. You know, so people have intense carbohydrate issues and intense sugar issues as well as far as cravings go. So, you know, they're craving these different foods because the cell wants energy and you're getting that signal that we need more, but it's all in there. It's just not getting into the cell. So it's not being utilized properly. Uh, dark dry patches on the skin. And so here's the next thing here is how do you go about testing for this? Now, first of all, you can go and you can get some blood tests. You can go to your doctor. They can check insulin levels. They can even check your blood sugar levels. But you can also do a simple blood sugar test, go and test right in the comfort of your home. You can go to any local pharmacy, typically any local grocery store, and you can get a blood sugar uh, meter. And what I'll do too is I'll put one in the li a link in the description below to the one that I use because I'm always going and testing this myself just to kind of see where I fall. I want to see where I'm at. Now, when we look at blood sugar, I want to teach you some of the numbers you need to be aware of. Now, when we look at good, healthy blood sugar levels, it's going to be from anywhere between 70 and 100. Now, uh, rule of thumb is 80 to 100, but there's going to be some people who fall in at like 75, and that's okay. So 80 to 100 typically. Now, that is safe. That means that you're completely fine. Now, when we look at where we start to get into you know, a little bit of a dicey situation, and this is where a lot of people fall, this is estimated that 84 million people fall into this this particular category. One in three people fall in this particular category, and this is pre-diabetes. Eight hours of fasting, you take that little drip of blood, you put it on the meter, it tells you 100 and between 100 and 125, then you have uh, pre-diabetes, okay? Now when we look at this, pre-diabetes is a big deal because it's estimated between five and 10 years, you'll have the full-blown real deal, uh, full-blown diabetes. Now 125 plus is full-blown diabetes. So we wanna make sure that when we are testing this, we're able to see where we're at and we're making the proper, proper changes in order to actually reverse this issue. Now, these different numbers here, they're milligrams per deciliter. So we're talking 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter. So we wanna make sure that we test this, we take a look at it, and we make the proper changes. Because here's the deal, is that if you are someone who is suffering from insulin resistance, diabetes, here's the common conditions associated with it. Type two diabetes, okay? A lot of people suffering from that. Heart disease, the number one killer, killing people prematurely every single day by the thousands. So heart disease is a major one. PCOS, so there's a lot of women out there who are suffering from PCOS, and that's why when you follow like the keto diet, when you follow a low carb diet, that is why you're able to reverse this PCOS issue. A lot of women have amazing testimonials uh, that follow my keto plan or follow my low carb plan simply because they're able to reverse this issue here. Fatty liver, another thing that many people are suffering from. Neurodegenerative conditions, we're thinking Alzheimer's, we're thinking brain degeneration, we're thinking Parkinson's, we're thinking, uh, you know, basically uh, too much sugar in the blood destroying the nervous system. And so big problem there as well. High blood pressure, okay? Now we're starting to think metabolic syndrome. We're starting to think of syndrome X, okay? This is basically when you have blood sugar instability, highs and lows, you got fatigue, you have hyper irritability, you have um, high blood pressure, you have cholesterol imbalance. I mean, the you can't sleep at night, the list goes on and on, okay? And so this is considered metabolic syndrome or syndrome X. And this is what happens when you have insulin resistance. 
so cholesterol imbalances and even cancer, okay? So now, what do you do about this situation? So like I said from the very beginning, you can reverse this, and I'm gonna give you a couple step process here of what you can do, and it's not that hard to do. Now, coming from the place of where you are, if you have insulin resistance or full-blown diabetes, this can be a challenge because you're simply, I mean, you got a lot of things messing with you right now. You have, you know, kind of the mental, the mental challenges, but you also have the hormonal challenges, the highs and lows, blood sugar all over the place. You're not feeling well, okay? And then you put in all that effort and guess what? the progress comes pretty slow. So it's really about making sure that you start these things and stick to it. Now, first of all, low carb. So low carb is gonna be very important or even following the ketogenic diet is even better at this point. If you already have insulin resistance, you already have diabetes, the ketogenic diet is an amazing, amazing diet in order to reverse this issue. And then some people, depending on how bad they have this, they can go on the ketogenic diet for you know, for a long time and it really, really serves them well. Whereas if they come off of it, some of these flare ups start to happen again. So the ketogenic diet sometimes becomes a permanent situation for some of these people, but guess what? They have an amazing quality of life while following it. Low carb ketogenic diet, very, very important. Make sure that you're eating whole foods, lots of vegetables, um, making sure that you're cutting out all sugar, uh, making sure that you're cutting out all these garbage carbohydrates, the white breads and bagels and all that stuff. Exercise. Now exercise is one of those things that most people don't get enough in. And unfortunately, a lot of people want to overcomplicate it, right? I actually did a video and I'll put it in the uh, link in the description below on this, but you know, there's so much power in just a 30 minute brisk walk a day. I understand that many of the people who are suffering from this issue that are watching this video are going to go, Hey, I don't want to go to the gym. I don't want to start doing sprints and pumping weights, but guess what? A 30 minute brisk walk a day is very powerful and it's absolutely essential for your overall health. Now, when we look at exercise in general, if you are not getting exercise on a daily basis, then you are deficient in it, okay? Because anything that is required by the human DNA, required by the human body on a daily basis in order to thrive and express health, it is automatically a deficiency if you're not getting it. Many people are exercise deficient. You have to get exercise daily. A 30-minute 30, 30 brisk walk is really amazing. So don't overcomplicate it. It's very powerful, 30 minutes brisk walk a day. Fasting, okay? Now, 16 and 8 intermittent fasting, one meal a day intermittent fasting, three day water fast, seven day water fast, all extraordinarily powerful when it comes to reversing insulin resistance. And what I'll do is I'll put a link right up here that you can go and click on and watch my full intermittent fasting video that teaches on everything you need to know about it. And I'll put a link in the description below here so you don't lose this video. You can continue on, but all resources, of course, will be in the description. Lose weight, okay? Basically, if you're doing low carb, exercise, fasting, you will lose weight. Now, as I said before, when people are metabolically healthy, they can start doing these things and the weight will just fall off, right? When you're metabolically unhealthy, you have to go through this healing period. And this is where a lot of people get very frustrated and they almost, you know, just want to completely give up. But the reason for you not losing weight right away if you are metabolically unhealthy is because you have to go through this healing period. And then finally, once you create balance within your body, blood sugars drop down, insulin's drop down, diet's on point, you're moving, you're getting some exercise and then the weight starts to come off, okay? Not everybody's going to pr approach this equally. Some people it's gonna happen faster for and others it's gonna happen slower for. But here's the deal, is that you didn't get in this position overnight, so you can't expect it. It's completely unre unreasonable to expect it to go away overnight. It's gonna take time. So remember that. Next year is supplementation, okay? Uh, simple multivitamin and mineral, good quality one. Very important here, it's gonna help. Uh, fish oils, omega-3s, very important as well. Now the other thing too is clinically what I use is a supplement called Insulin Balance. Now Insulin Balance is designed to do, of course, what it's called, balance your insulin levels out, drop them down lower, but also create blood sugar balance. So there's lots of nutrients in it that are all designed to accomplish those goals. Very powerful, lots of amazing testimonials on it. A lot of people who have insulin resistance are using this and seeing great results. I'll put a link in the description below to the Insulin Balance formula. Now here's the deal is that you have all this information now. Um, you know, knowledge alone isn't power, knowledge is potential power. You now have the knowledge, you have the potential power to go in and change and transform your life. So implement this stuff in, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and if you have any questions, put it right down here in the comment section below, and then also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet, I'd greatly appreciate it, and check out my other videos on how you can improve your health. I'll see you in the next video.